Well, good morning or good evening. Welcome to the first notary or allocator governance call taking place on March 19th. Let's take a look at what we have on this call for the agenda. We're going to start out with talking about the data cap distributions that you're going to start seeing as allocators, give you an update on timelines, what to expect. Then we'll move into the setup. So if there's any questions that came from having the multi-sig or your own repo, we'll have dedicated time to troubleshoot and go over anything that might be blocking or address any questions. Then we have new tooling coming from the Fiddle team. So they'll introduce themselves and they'll walk through step-by-step -step how to use some of these new registry platforms and make sure that you're set up for success when that data cap hits this week. Then we'll end with uh, record keeping best practices. A lot of questions about, hey, how do I keep track of my diligence? So we'll talk about that in a discussion forum and answer anything you may have. And the last thing comes from the community. We have an old eFill Plus application, 928, they were really hoping to be top of mind for any allocators that are getting some data set. So they have a quick slide. I'll talk to it if they're not on the call. Lucas, if you're here, feel free to jump in. And this will just be a great way. If you got your data cap and you want to test it, this is a good application that's had many signatures in the past that's just looking for a top off. As always, we'll have plenty of time at the end of the call. This is March 19th. Next call is going to be on April 2nd. And just be mindful of the time zones. If you're watching this recording because you missed it, we use UTC as the baseline that shouldn't change. But if your time zone did change, you might see an adjustment. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to KZ from Fiddle to kind of give a quick introduction to what they are and what they're doing. KZ? Thanks, K-Ray. Hello, everyone. Um, Kevin here, formerly with Protocol Labs and the Filecoin Plus Governance team. Um, as some of you know, and I posted some updates in, in Slack recently, but I'm part of a team that has now nucleated out of Protocol Labs and we're working independently. So I'm no longer part of Protocol Labs or the Phil Plus governance team. I'm part of an entity called Filecoin Incentive Design Labs. We The acronym we're using is FIDDLE. Uh, so you'll, you'll start to hear that more and more. But we are a small, strong team of four people, uh, Marta, Will, myself, and Torfin. And we are focused on a few things I've highlighted here, but just to quickly run through. First of all, we're, we're primarily focused right now on getting allocators up and running that mimic what we had available previously as part of the LVN pack. I just muted. We have two allocators that were that were running, one for open public data and one for enterprise um, private encrypted data sets. So those, again, those will be very similar to what the LDN, the way the LDN pathway functioned previously, and I'll be sort of uh, running those as, as an allocator. We're also focused on helping to create and iterate on um, tooling and ensuring that, you know, everyone involved from the allocator level to the client level has, has a great experience. So for example, some of the things we're talking through today, Will's gonna go through uh, the allocator registry and, and sort of how that's being set up that's something our team is working on in the background to help support all of this. And then finally, we're, we're just looking to help everyone involved, myself particularly, um, as we're learning and, and iterating and developing things, I'll be sharing updates. I'm happy to answer questions from other allocators who, if you're lost, if, if I'm lost, you're probably lost. So we, we can work through this together. Um, so, so really another part of our goal is to just help everyone have, have a great experience going through this. Yeah, that's it, Kerry. Thanks, Casey. I really appreciate that. So anybody on the call watching, one of the takeaways is feel free to, to tag us both. I think KZ will be really focused on what does the tooling look like and how are we making that tooling work for you? And I'll be looking at like, how can we support you from the governance side and get the comms set or any like roadblocks you may have. So we'll be happy. Feel free to tag me and we'll get you through. Thanks, KZ. All right, quick check in on timelines. Timeline number one, probably curious about data cap. So here's what we're doing. We're finishing up that whole data cap distribution now that the tooling's ready to go. Optimistically, you should see that today or tomorrow. And a quick note on that data cap as a refresh is that you'll be getting five petabytes. That's the initial tranche allocated with that five petabytes as you begin to allocate your distributions at around the 75% mark, it's gonna trigger what we call an audit. All this audit is, is looking if you're meeting your diligence plan spelled out in your application. 
and asking questions to make sure that this is set before you get larger tranches that come through. And that is going to be covered later on the call with bookkeeping. So look for that data cap by latest tomorrow. There's a new allocator governance repo coming. Look for this end of week, very similar to how we had the notary governance, but a lot of updates to the readme files, to the action items, some of the contents from this call. So if you're looking for additional information, you're going to start to see a lot more of that coming in that new repo. And lastly, if you were an allocator that for whatever reason wasn't able to get your information over, this could be setting up a multi-sig, this could be getting back with verification of who you are, whatever the reason, if you're not receiving a data cap distribution this week, we wanted to check in that you won't miss the whole program. You'll just have to wait until we make that second round of allocations. And the reason for this wait is we're still working on a lot of this tooling. And once that tooling is up, it'll be a much faster process. But with these first cycles, it's it's starting this. So with that manual, that will be the wait. Any impacted notaries, I'm going to follow up with you in the allocator channel that we have. And that will be a good way for you to know what's coming and how to stay abreast to make sure you're all set. So with that, let's take a look at how this compliance and tooling and automating is going to work. So we've had this slide on the last two calls. I kept it on this call just because this is one of those really important slides. If you were looking at anything, first one would be making sure that you're sticking with like the rules of the program. And this pretty much states like how many replicas will be kept, what's your distribution plan, number of storage providers and your diligence. So as you begin to make these distributions, be very mindful that, hey, if you're passing out this data cap, do I have some kind of record where I said I'm going to have three replicas? How do I show that I have these three replicas? How do I show that I ask these due diligence? And we'll talk about that more on the call. And then the area is bolded out. That's, again, just to make sure you're tracking. Targeting around three days turnaround, but when we get this going for the first time, it's going to have that initial audit to, again, make sure that this diligence and bookkeeping is taking place. When folks are applying for data cap, they're going to be coming to this application page. We're no longer going to be using the large LDN where it was one blanket GitHub. And this is why everyone had to create their own issues. So we have some place to mark these and run through it. And when we talk about tooling and Will walks us through, you'll kind of get a feel for how this process works. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Will from Fiddle, and he's going to walk us through step by step how these new repositories work. So Will, thanks for being on the call. Floor is yours. Sure, absolutely. So this first step uh, applies to those who want to make use of standardized tooling. Um, in the previous week or so, um, everyone got asked to make a, a repo for their bookkeeping. Um, and if you want to use the tooling, then the tooling app, uh, you'll either make your own by cloning uh, the tooling and having it run your own, or you can authorize the service that, that we're running, and it's just a, the same open source code. Um, so you'll go to this uh, link that's in the slides of app slash data cap bot and install it so that it has access to your repo. Um, what this is uh, doing uh, is a few different things, and we'll talk through that life cycle that it's helping you manage. But basically, it provides um, a user interface that you can use to see active client applications and sign the data cap uh, to release it to, to clients who apply. And then it reflects that in your allocation bookkeeping with a set of JSON files that provide a somewhat standardized way that the governance team can use to build uh, auditing uh, tooling. Um, I think we'll, we'll see what types of bookkeeping uh, all of us as allocators end up with that we present to the governance team for their auditing. Uh, we're happy to evolve ours if if there's things that you know need to change so that we continue to be standardized. But this is sort of our our first uh, crack at it. Um, but the the sort of immediate action item uh, to start using this tooling for those who are interested is you you go to this app and you make sure that this uh, this app has access to the bookkeeping repo that you have set up already. Cool. Next step. So what that will do uh, first. Uh, and this happens sort of just on a periodic schedule, is it will copy this set of files into your bookkeeping repo as a basic scaffold. And so this uh, repo, and, and we have uh, an example of it in our open data pathway, um, but uh, you will see in particular 
that in FidLab slash allocator template is this set of files that get copied into each repo after the app is installed. Um, provide a schema of what the sort of records of the state of allocations that have happened are. So you can just reference the schema and do your own bookkeeping and try and match that schema. Um, or this, this sort of defines a process. Um, so these files will get pushed periodically. It's a, it's a cron job that happens every once in a while. So it's not immediate after you have access to the app. Um, the way that the, and this is probably too technical at this point, but the way that these files are going to get pushed in is the governance team defines sort of the, the source of truth for allocators. And that is in Filecoin project slash uh, allocator registry. That has a JSON file for each of you based on the information that you've been submitting to the government's governance team. And so that has things like what multi-sig they'll be getting the data cap to, um, along with which GitHub users have access um, and, and are sort of in charge and things like that. You can see your, and what and where your repo is that you'll be doing your bookkeeping. So you can see yours, you can uh, propose changes in that uh, github.com slash filecoin project slash allocator registry uh, if anything is wrong there, but that's sort of the source of truth. The app looks at the allocator um, or, or looks at the bookkeeping repos that have been registered there. And then the ones that it has access to, it, it pushes this initial set of templates. Next slide. The most relevant one initially is one of these files will create an issue template in your repo. And what that means is you've now got, um, when you open a new issue, you get suggested this create a data cap application template that, that causes a template to, to show up um, that has sort of most of the expected forms that look a lot like an LDN application. So um, you can add additional fields if you've got additional due diligence or other customization that you want to, to do here. Um, but this, this provides sort of the landing page that, that continues a form-like application for clients to apply for data cap from your allocator. When that happens, so when a client uh, submits their data cap application, the bot will automatically convert those into a pull request and will provide uh, a web interface out which you can see the set of applied things and approve and uh, sign up data cap for them. So next slide. So the so here's here's an example of what that form looks like. Um, the that that is also in this allocator template repo. Next slide. So the front end that corresponds to this is at allocator.tech. Um, if you go there, you will be able to uh, log in with GitHub. You will then once you have logged in with GitHub, see the pending applications for your allocator. And again, this is using that allocator registry repo as sort of the source of truth of which GitHub users are associated with which allocator pathways. Um, it'll, it'll ask you to OAuth uh, just to show who you are on GitHub. And then um, if you have not OAuth, you'll just get sort of a view of all of them, including currently a test repo. Um, but in general, what you'll see is the set of all allocator repos. That test repo probably comes down before uh, anyone gets data cap. So in the next day. Next slide. So um, here, here's sort of the, the view that happens. You get sort of a detailed view of these inbound client applications. So from that form, it turns into uh, a view of what's being requested. Um, it goes through a very similar process to what you might be used to in an LDN world with the um, maybe caveat that now you as an allocator are the one responsible both for the governance review checkbox and the giving data cap process because you you have some additional autonomy. So the initial state that you'll see these inbound applications on is pending review. Once you press pending review, you'll be able to move on to the ready to sign state and there will be a propose that connects to your ledger and causes you to send the uh, uh, message for adding a verified client to the multi-sig that you've got set up that has data cap. Um, so that's that's the uh, the flow, um, but really there's one action button uh, when you click into an application and you keep pressing that button and eventually the data cap gets uh, sent. Uh, I think that's the the basics of it. 
Um, we're happy to answer questions. Uh, in the, I think I think you've got the the links to the bot, which is the the setup that you can do now to be ready, and then to the allocator template that has our scaffolding. We're happy to take issues there, uh, especially as people are interested in schema changes and so forth. Um, uh, we also have a another repo where we're tracking all of the tooling that we think still needs to get built. And so that is um, in uh, in the FidLabs org, there is a allocator tooling um, repo that we're just tracking all of the issues where we don't have a more specific uh, place to put them yet. So if there's other things that you want on the tooling and you don't know where to go, um, github.com slash FidLabs slash allocator tooling is a great place to leave issues and we will try and prioritize them. Um, cool. Galen, I see a hand. I don't know if that's that I'm over time or a question. No, it's a question. No such Great. thing as over time in this universe. Um, question. So I've got the uh, Fid Labs um, GitHub repo open. I wanted to get those links that you were talking about and make sure that we're pointing people to the correct places. Um, also, uh, the right place where you want them to open um, issues if they are having uh, any bugs. So you said there's allocator tooling. Allocator tooling is just a tracking place for issues that you don't have a better place to put. Okay, so if somebody is running into an issue um, with yep. the tooling, <laughs> this is a link that they could use. Yep. And then you said there was another one where um, you're tracking um, tooling that doesn't isn't built yet that people might want. Same place. Same place. Okay. All right. Maybe we could clean up and make a good like bug report template for people. Yeah, but right now we would assign labels of enhancement or feature request versus bug, uh, but we can add some better templates. Cool. Awesome. That was my only question comment. Well, Will, thank you so much. Appreciate you walking us through that. Anybody on the call have any questions on this before this goes live? Eric, see your hand, floor is yours, bud. Uh, thank you, Kevin. So, Will, uh, do you uh, would like to send us the, like a video trial uh, to teach us how to use that tool? Sure, we can we can uh, do a video walkthrough. Um, this is all sort of coming together together with all of this uh, change. So this is all sort of getting tested in these last couple of days as well, um, because we also don't yet have production data cap. So uh, the transition to uh, to to mainnet is something that we're also ironing out the bugs as we as we go. Um, this is tooling that was built over the last I don't know what three four months. Um, so has sort of got spec'd before this transition to allocators was fully uh, announced and planned, and so has been uh, a, a mix of both tooling improvements that was de designed for the previous LDN world. Uh, along with transitioning it to this allocator world. So we're we're trying to make sure that things are a little bit nicer. Um, so some of this is this uh, tracking of everything with JSON files, which has been sort of a long desired thing rather than issues. Uh, it gives us just a better history and a better you know ability to do machine parsing of things. Um, along with, you know, now we've got separate repos and ownership uh, and a little bit more decentralized view of of where things are. So, uh, yeah, we will we will get uh, a video walkthrough of this. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I I have now done it a couple times and I was able to get through it uh, successfully. Um, but uh, I have also been a little bit closer to it. So thank you very much, Will. And also, yeah. uh, I'd like to have a, a request for for Kevin or for Galen. I think uh, through the, the previous uh, slides, I I saw. The whole procedure will be totally completely different with the previous one. So, can you guys have a like a one or two times a trial for all allocators to to try the whole procedures for like a testing? Perhaps maybe we can we, we will allocate the data cap. We will make a mistake. I think so. One or two times for trial. That's easier for us to practice the whole procedures. 
Thank you. So we recommend, and what we have done so far is we trialed it by giving a 32 gigabyte data cap allocation, right? A single deal and confirming that that was in fact able, right? You can make your own test client and you can allocate them 32 gigabytes. I think that will be lost within the scope of the, the five, five uh, tips. So. Okay, cool. Thanks. Eric, I appreciate you being on this call. Those are great questions. I took down for action two things. Let me just check in with you what those two things are. Thing number one is having a guide on what the steps are that Will just said. And action number two is how do you test this? So you set this up. So we'll follow up. I will say on behalf of like governance, the goal of this first data cap distribution is to get this right. So I think as we start to test this tooling, be very mindful of that, that we're kind of in this iterative process as you stand up your allocator pathways. All I'd ask is that you be very communicative with us on what you're doing if it's something out of the blue. And out of the blue would mean like you distribute four petabytes tomorrow. That's going to be a little bit of like a red flag. But as Will mentioned, those smaller amounts, like 32 terabytes, that is like a great number to go through. And I'd like to pause, and since we have Galen on the line, Galen, do you have any kind of thoughts on the testing and best practices as people start to kick this off? Yes, uh, GB, not TB. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. The scale, <laughs> just to make sure for the recording that we're on the same page. Um, yeah, we. I, I'm going through and checking now a number of, um, it looks like uh, something like, 50 or 60 um, root key holder messages were approved, which means that um, these allocator pathways have data cap. Um, and so like teams can start testing these live in production with live data cap. And as um, Will was saying, a, a great way to do that is install everything, get to the front end. You can submit a you know test client application um, and then request 32 GB, um, enough to do, you know, one deal, uh, and test that flow. And as you run into issues or something doesn't work as expected, um, that allocator tooling repo is a great place to capture those, capture screenshots along the way, help us make these tutorials, um, you know, help us see what works in your region. And like Will was saying, we're trying to open this up so that everybody can be running their own pathway as they see fit. But at the same time, there are standards that we have to hold people to so that we can manage the tooling and we can manage the compliance. If everybody ran 80 different pathways, 80 different ways with 80 different backend systems and 80 different bookkeeping, there's just no way that we could scale that compliance checking. So this is some of this needs to be standardized um, for now, just so that we can have an ability to go do a quick audit. Um, I think that's what this like next slide is. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But so run those tests, do it with 32 um, gigs of data cap, check it on chain. As we run into problems, we are also continuing to invest in tooling to make remove data cap faster and smoother and easier. Um, so as we do encounter issues with tooling or bugs or glitches where um, a, a incorrect allocation was made, uh, we are working on tooling to make that part cleaner as well. So, Kay Ray, is this my slide? If you want it, love it. You're <laughs> cute. Enough. Cool. Um, We've talked about this in a couple of the governance calls, repeating some of it. Each pathway has its own unique repo. Um, like Will was mentioning, the bot is going to install those things. We're going to keep working on those installation packages being um, consistent and, and easy to use. And as you want to make changes to things, we're going to work on having some clear standards for where you can propose those PR changes that what would apply to just your pathway without breaking any of the compliance checks that we do? What would you, what are you proposing to apply to 
um, kind of all of the pathways because it'll, it's cleaner and makes more sense. So we're working on getting that more consistent and getting a, a good process for where do we keep those kind of written clear standards of, of what is required for bookkeeping. Um, we're going to be building the audit tools and those are things that we'll be looking at all of these repos. Um, so we'll be in touch uh, with all of the allocators to make sure they understand. If you stated something in your application, we are going to be converting that into um, stated JSON claims in the allocator registry for your pathway. If you said this was your allocation schedule, that's going to go in that JSON. If you need to make changes to those things, that has to come in the form of a PR. Then we're going to be doing the compliance tools that look at all of the allocations made from one um, allocator address and compare it to that JSON and say, you know, this allocator made 100 allocations. All 100 of them were successfully mapped to their allocation schedule, or they made 100, but 99 of them mapped to their allocation schedule because one of them was a 32 gig allocation. That's like totally reasonable and not going to be like an immediate, you know, ban. If there's like one outlier in a situation like that, when we just told you use that for testing. Um, but this is where, you know, we'll be building the tooling that's looking and comparing the application that you made for how you would perform diligence and where you would uh, track information, what clients would be in scope. The bookkeeping is taking all of your front end tooling. How do you receive client applications? How do you perform diligence? How do you record that that diligence has happened? How do you give out data cap? If you need to make a subsequent allocation because somebody has used it, what determinations are you using before you make a subsequent allocation? If you need to intervene because you are not going to give more data cap, why and when did you intervene? That is all of the bookkeeping that happens in the middle. And then next to that is all of the compliance checking that compares those things together. And so we want to look at both the health and activity. How many applications are you getting a week? What is your turnaround time? But we also want to look at sort of the compliance audit. If you said you were only going to work with clients that had public open data, and then you got an application and somebody said, I have private enterprise data, can I have data cap? And you give them data cap. Those two things don't match up. You said you were only going to work with clients that had public open data. A client told you that is not who they were. You should not have given them data cap. That's where we need to be able to look at this bookkeeping um, to say, who did you give data cap to and why? Um, so that's that. Uh, next slide. I don't know, what's the, is there another one on bookkeeping or is that? Yeah. So this is all going to go into um, GitHub issues. Uh, if you are doing a different pathway, or if you're not a manual pathway, if you're doing a market-based or an automatic pathway or some other, we uh, you know down the line we have someone propose other types of pathways. We still need some kind of bookkeeping. Um, we need a place where we can go and check what are what records are you capturing and maintaining? Do you have logs? that we can look at to see, do you have some kind of accounting that tracks the um, you know, bids on the different things? So this is where we are going to need to be working uh, closely with those teams that are making market-based and automated um, to understand what is the fastest, easiest, most automated bookkeeping that we can do that works for your system and allows us to perform a compliance audit with transparency. Um, so there will still need to be some kind of bookkeeping captured, but we understand that that bookkeeping is going to look different uh, compared to some of the manual diligence pathways. It may still follow the same format. You may be submitting client issues. You may just change some of the questions and you know, have a different amount of uh, content for the answers and say, this is the client, this is when they applied, this is what they gave me, this is how they passed third-party KYC. So I gave them 32 gigs of data cap, and that's that. Um, and you may turn that into an automated logging that pushes that to a GitHub repo. So 
we'll be working with those teams. But again, if the bookkeeping is not consistent and standardized and easy for the governance team to audit, the problem is it is going to slow your pathway down from getting more data cap um, allocations going forward. Because the longer that it takes to figure out how we audit you, um, the longer it takes for us to make a request to root key holders that you are in compliance and ready for more data cap. So help us help you. Moral of the story there. Um, next slide. So cool. essentially for those of you that are keen, a little bit of history and what we're gonna talk about. So when Enterprise Fill Plus was running, there was a series of applications that have been open for some time. There was one application and they're doing video storage it's kind of fallen in this quasi gray area where when the LDN was kind of sunset, they've already had their signatures. They're hoping to get on your radar, yours being allocators receiving data cap for a review and a signature. So it's issue 928 it's from Kabat. The POC is Lucas on Slack. And essentially this has had diligence in the past. It's had signatures in the past and it's just standing by and it's been waiting for data cap to be reallocated. So if you were looking for applications or projects that you wanted to go back and test some of this or work, what's nice about this POC is they're very communicative. They're on Slack, they respond to GitHub, same day, same hour. So they are a great test case. And because they have the history on it, it makes it a lot easier if you were setting up a lot of your diligence tooling or like asking these questions to kind of come back and take a look. So they're looking to finalize this ongoing eFill Plus project, issue 928, it will be in Slack. And they prepared some of these lines. So you could see this if you wanted to perform anything. And really the goal of me sharing this is twofold. One, to make sure that they get help. And then two, if you were looking for one of those test applications or a way to really communicate easily before you work with a prod client, this might be a really good place. So first come, first serve, whoever wants to work with them. It's issue 928 and we could pull this in. So with that, we talked a lot about this call on timelines. Will walked us through a lot on the steps for the registry. Galen kind of circled back with some of the testing and bookkeeping diligence that will need to be had. And I kind of close it off with that application. With the time we have left, I'll turn the floor over for any questions you may have regarding the program, your application, or next steps. Floor is yours. All right, all right, all right. We'll take that. We'll put these slides and links in the allocator Slack, and then I'll also link them in the Phil Plus Slack. If you have any questions or follow-up, please let us know in those threads. Those will be the best way to get it. And the next one of these governance calls happens at 7 o'clock Pacific, 0200 UTC. So if there's any follow-ups you want to see. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Looking forward to seeing the data cap distributions go out, or if we can help you in any way. Friendly Lowe's, welcome to the second allocator governance call taking place March 19th, 20th, 2024. Let's take a look high level at the agenda for this call. First points are everything for allocators. We're gonna start out with data cap distributions. Make sure that everyone has started to receive that. Check in on timing if you haven't. Second, we're gonna talk about the allocator setup steps. So these came through on the last call from Galen. Then we took a lot of time in our Slack channel to address Wanted to re-follow up, make sure no one was blocked, and check in on that. Then the last two things is we'll do the registry walkthrough. We had Will on the call this morning from the Fiddle team. I'll do my best if he's not able to join us to kind of walk through what the tooling will look like. And then after that, we'll end that with record-keeping best practices. Everyone set up a repo. We'll talk about the reasons why and how to make sure that that's all set up for you. At the very end, we had an application 928 that presented some content, so we'll save a few minutes. If this call is like the morning, there should be lots of time for questions or at the end of the call. Feel free to drop them in chat and we'll get to them as we go or wait till the end, we have plenty of time. So with that, today is March 19th, next call is April 2nd. Big update, KZ posted this in the public channels for Slack, wanted to make sure that everyone saw it and had a talking point. 
KZ, I can't see. Are you on the call right now? I don't think you are, but KZ, are you here? No, I just did a quick scan. He's not. All right, I'll see if I can hey, talk. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think there's some lag. The screen share is not coming through. And I think it's for a couple people. Let's try this again then. More screen. How about now? Any better? Take it from the yeah. Lab. All right, all right. Looks better now. I'm still getting some lag, but it might be on my side. I'm not sure. Keep me honest, people. If I start to lag, put it in chat and I'll make sure I <laughs> go for it. All right. Hey, Fiddle. So Fiddle stands for the Filecoin Incentive Design Labs. It's a four-person team. It's KZ, Will, Marta, and Torfin. This is a nucleated team that came out of PL. And as you can see from their bullet points, what they're focused on is the allocator tooling. So they're running essentially an allocator themselves. And in the process, they're developing like, how does the tooling work? So on this call, we'll talk a lot about how the registry is set up. They're the ones behind that. They'll talk about some of the backend tooling that will tie into bookkeeping. They're the ones behind that. So really good asset to have. If you have questions or issues about some of the workflows, or how the data cap process is going out, the Fiddle team is a great point of contact. So if you feel free to tag any one of us, and we'll cross tag each other to get you help. All right, with that, timeline check-ins. First timeline, data cap. If you haven't started to see that today, you should. So we're gonna see that data cap start to trickle out today and tomorrow. This is only going to the allocators that have set up their multi-sigs with an F1, F2 address that have created their bookkeeping plan and then sent us all of that information. All of that gets taken and then put on to these really complex chains that take a while to set up. So as we work to automate this, there's this human element of the setup. So it takes some time. So you should see that. If not, please echo back. End of week. Last week, we announced that we're going to have a new repo coming. We're working on the documentation for this big stand-up, big project. But by the end of the week, You'll be able to see all the proposals, all the discussions, everything that we had with the old notary boards migrated and updated. And after that's April 10th. So if you were an allocator that was not able to provide us your multi-sig or your bookkeeping information, we had to move forward. So the train left and that train was the data cap distribution that's going out. What you'll do is just still have that ready. We'll open it back up when we start to do the refresh and we'll give you your initial allocations when that goes out. If you have any issues, feel free to slack me, but for anybody that was not part of that initial data cap distribution, April 10th is probably the realistic timeline. We'll work to get it faster, but again, we're working on the tech and other issues to come through. All right, compliance and auditing. Feel free to ask any questions and I'll get to you in the chat as we go. Feel free to interrupt as well. So audits and compliance are gonna be a real big part of this initial five petabyte distribution. What that means is that if an allocator receives these five petabytes and doesn't oblige by oblige standards for checks, then there's no way that we can allocate those checks for any data, uh, database information in the future. Wow, I'm losing my words here as I talk. So essentially what that means is with each one of these applications, just have to abide by the standards. So they're listed at the top, the replicas, the distribution, the number of storage providers, and the bookkeeping diligence. So if someone says it's going to be open data set or private data set, you've listed that all out and it's available that it can be looked at. And that's what those repos are for. We'll check in on the end of the call. You see bolded out on this slide, three points that I hope you take away. And we're just going to talk about again. Number one, everybody, regardless of the size of their request, gets an initial five petabytes. This is your, hey, I'm going to show you how I'm doing this. You're going to show everybody how you're doing it. And then that's what's going to lead to your next tranche. So be very mindful as you're using this five petabytes that you're abiding by the standards of your compliance and what you spelled out in bookkeeping. The th third point is that we're targeting an SLA of around three days. So the first time is going to take a little bit longer as we figure this out. But hopefully going forward, it's much more of a regimented and eventual tooling process. So that'll trigger once you've sent 75% of the data. So that's what's going to happen now that you are starting to receive that data cap distribution. If clients are applying for data cap, 
the fill page that we have up here on the screen is live. This is used for that data cap request. So when these come through, that's where we're going to see a lot of these requests. We're also working on the back end to make sure that the list of all the allocators is current in these pages. A lot of these systems have different developers, different code bases, different pull systems. So we're trying to migrate all those at the same time. Bear with us and thanks for your patience. You should see those names coming shortly. All right. And with this, this is the new section of the call. I highly recommend anybody that's in here now watches the recording. I'll put it in allocators and that will be straight from Will's mouth who's working on that. But in his absence, I'll do my best to explain the tooling that Fiddle is building. What you're looking at right now is a slide for step one, and that's having your GitHub repository set up specific to your organization. So once you have that organization set up, you'll see on the right hand side, there is the install button. If you install that, if you'd like to, it's not mandatory, but if you're gonna use the automated tooling, install this, and this is the JSON file that was going to handle a lot of the bots. So when we built these bots, this was back in Q3 of last year, these are now able to run. But in order for them to run on your applications and your bookkeeping, you have to have this tooling installed. So if you haven't done so already, make sure in your repo your tooling is set up. Step two, once you've got the bot installed, you need to set up these repos to handle the applications for the bot to cycle that through. So the screenshot that KZ shared here is essentially how it should look. If you're curious to grab the repo, here's a bookmark here on the slides. We could drop these later. But essentially, you'll need your commits for GitHub, applications, and your data. And this way, when the bot runs through, it can grab all that. Your templates are going to be set up in the same fashion. And this is where you can click New Issue and then Edit. What you can do, again, not mandatory, but if you are setting up to be like off by fiddle, you could copy their applications by hitting the edit and template, and then you can set it up in the same way. The benefit of this is that you're using the standard that's being pushed out. You don't have to really come back and justify it, and it should be as simple and straightforward as we can possibly make it, hopefully. <laughs> so let us know. And so the template will kick off and just copy it. So once you've got that template, it's good to go. You'll fill it out just like the old LDNs were filled out last year and the year before that where you put in the organization, what they've applied for, who the applicant's information, and Viola, all that's gonna pop up. And all this is gonna link back to some of the tooling that's being built by the Fiddle team. And in the screenshot, they're showing you the link for the allocator.tech. And if you see this page, this will look very similar to the registry page that was used by fourth round and third round of the past, where you can see, hey, what is the application that's open? What was the amount requested? And what is the status as it works its way through? Be very mindful that you'll need to authorize your GitHub account. So you'll see in the screenshot on the right, we have it like, hey, set up to get to that. At the very top right, you'll see your name. Can't miss it. There's only like three buttons on the page. And then go ahead and fill that out and we'll get you all set up. If you hit any blocks, any issues, if you tag KZ and or Will, they're going to be the fastest POCs to help unblock you. And once all that takes place, it's all going to tie into the registry. So you see from these two screenshots here, I can see the TADIS, the data type, the slingshot amount, everything that goes on with it. And then this has its review. So once you've taken part in this, this will be how you can start to disperse and use your data cap as you go out. But here's the note on bookkeeping. Very mindful of this, please. When you're doing your bookkeeping, be mindful that you know, you know that in like two months, one month, whatever it is that you use 75% of your data cap, you'll need to have this ready. So if you do your bookkeeping after everything is said and done and there's missing information, I highly can say that it's going to lead to either delays or preventing of future data cap. So make sure you set your bookkeeping up with the same enthusiasm that you would set something else up. And that's essentially, this is going to run that bot that goes and checks all those bookkeeping plans to make sure that in the application, it does what it says. And when it runs this data cap, Ideally, it needs to pull from GitHub, which means if you're using your own tooling or you're going to have something set up, be very mindful for these edge cases that we're going to have to come back and see, like, how can we see this? So if you are building your own tooling, be hyper mindful of like that bookkeeping final plan in place. Everybody who's using the fiddle tooling, this automated system should make your life as simplified as possible because all of your questions are in the template and that's what will go to your repo. 
Again, any questions, anything you want to dive into, very happy to open it up. So with that, I'm going to pause and see if there's any questions related to the content before I share this application from someone else. So open floor, open discussion. We got one question from chat, and then I'll move on to the application. Kenneth, yes, good question. Is this going to go on YouTube? The answer is yes. Usually what happens after these calls is I download them, I polish them to remove the intros, the people coughing, and then that way I merge them and then upload it. Sometimes the delay happens on the upload side. So there's different channel managers for the YouTube content. And so sometimes we're kind of stuck in a queue. Typically, you'll see this video posted to YouTube, ideally same night, but next day is my goal. If it's ever slowed down, be very mindful that it's top of mind for me. So Kenneth, I'll put that link in Slack. And you can also, if you see my post from two days ago, it's all of the recordings in Slack. Great question. Thanks for that. All right. This application wanted to make sure that they were on your radar. So this application was an old enterprise, Phil Plus, project. It's been around for over a year and a half. I think it's coming on almost two years. And essentially, they're looking for the next round of signatures. So what they need is someone to come in. It's had signatures in the past. It's had a lot of positive reactions. You could check the CID checker and see where it stands as far as that goes. But if you receive your new allocation of data cap and you're looking to test it out and you want to start working with people that are highly communicative, I have been in comms with Lucas over at Kabat very friendly, very responsive. So if you are looking for an application, I'll post this over. It's number 928. It's a great one that you could take a look at, test your tooling. And they've taken the time to really spell out everyone that they've worked with, if you can see under their replica partners. So again, not a recommendation, but just putting that out there, you have a very active community member who's looking for an allocator. So if you were looking for a good test bed as you start to get ready, this would be a good one to work with if you were a team. All right, <laughs> that's it for newness. I'll check the text. It's anything you want. I see a question in chat. Would the data cap bot do CID checking too? That's great. I'm nearly certain that it is doing the CID checking because if you look at some of our existing tooling that's running, you can see that going. I think if I even pull up this application here that we talked about, we could see this. Let me grab this link here. I think that's also uh, asking about, will the CID checker then be configured on each person's repo sort of going forwards? Um, the goal is yes. This is one of the questions that we asked people in their application. Are they going to use this CID checker? Are they going to use different subsequent allocation bots? Um, and based on people's responses, this is also why we want everything in a standardized repo as well as in a standardized uh, sort of backend system them so that we can point the bots to it. As far as will the installation of the data cap bot from the fiddle teams, this first installation, I don't know if that will set up the CID checker bot or if there will be a sub subsequent um, kind of set of tools that you need to install. Because again, not everybody is using all of those different bots. Also, some people are configure will want to configure those bots differently. So that's still an open question um, to work with the fiddle team to get resolved. I, I'll make one last call for questions. If you're on the line right now, the biggest things that I hope you took away from the call are as follows. Data cap is going out now. If you're an allocator that didn't complete, get in comms with me and we'll get you set up. So when we do the next distribution, you're ready to go. The tooling is live. So those are in the deck. We'll put them in chat. And four, make sure your bookkeeping is really, really locked down and you're investing in that. Boo. So with that, I'll turn it over. Galen, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, I was just also going to, 
kind of double double click echo on the things that you were saying. Um, uh, the we're working with the fiddle team. They'll be oh great now it's trying to find my face here. We'll just turn that off. Um, <clears throat> Working with the fiddle team, I posted their link in chat as well. This is the link to their allocator tooling repo um, where people can track issues, any issues that we have with the tooling as well as feature requests for future things. Um, those can go in there. Uh, repo will be a great spot for it, but data cap is going out. Um, we've been getting the messages from root key holders. And so those five PIB allocations are landing on chain. Uh, I'm going through and confirming those and updating people's GitHub um, uh, GitHub application issues. They'll be marked as granted. So that'll kind of trickle down through the different dashboards. Um, once we start making updates to the those tools from Fiddle, they should be posting a readme doc as well um, to help people with that install. Clients can start applying. Um, you can also start applying as a test client and doing, this was a question that came up in the morning. Um, we encourage people to do a test 32 GB allocation, just a single um, deal size allocation to kind of help test end to end, make sure that your repo is set up the way that you're expecting it to. Um, as Carrie mentioned, uh, we want people to be able to run their own pathway, own their own pathway, make their own diligence decisions, um, set up their own sort of processes. However, the bookkeeping of these decisions uh, needs to have some standards to them. And the reason for that is we at scale, you know, we are building more and more automated tools to make this possible, but we don't have all of the tooling yet. Um, so it's gonna be myself and K Ray uh, working to perform these audits. So as your pathway starts to run out of data cap, that three-day SLA that we have, um, that's if we are able to go and actually check all of the allocations that you made. Um, and we're going to be taking all of the allocations that you have made to clients and comparing to them to your stated pathway application. So the more consistent and standardized your bookkeeping is, the easier it will be for us to tell was this client in scope? If you put in an application to say, I'm only going to work with clients that do um, you know, private enterprise data, and then you have an allocation on chain, and that allocation, we trace it back to a client application, and that client told you that it was public open data, those two things don't match up. So there is a, there is a problem there. So this is why we asked qualitatively, how are you going to perform diligence? Who is in scope for your pathway? What clients are you going to work with? What are your expectations for their storage providers, their type of data? How are you going to give out data cap? What is your allocation schedule? If you said that your allocation schedule was initial allocations of 25 TIBs and then doubling to 50 to 100, and then three weeks from now, you're giving out first allocations that are 75 TIBs, that doesn't match your allocation schedule. So with the way that you applied to be an allocator and said, this is how I will perform diligence. If your behavior doesn't match that, um, that's where we will be coming in and intervening and not approving additional allocations of data cap. So help us help you. If you start giving out data cap and you want to continue receiving data cap, you want to continue working with clients and onboarding data and growing this network, we need to be able to perform those audits so we need to be able to go see all of the evidence that the allocations that you are making match your application to be an allocator. Um, so that's why we want this standard. Um, and that, like I said, we will build more and more tooling to try and make this easier, faster, uh, and more automated um, and see if we can get that time uh, from three days down to you know two or one. A um, couple questions. The uh, there's questions around the tutorial video. Um, the fiddle team has been working on this and just the same as everyone else, they are getting their data cap uh, this week, which means they have been doing it in testing. But as of this week, they'll start doing it in production. Um, so they'll be, you know, making more recordings and posting more screenshots and kind of uh, read me docs throughout this week and next week, now that they have their data cap as well. So stay tuned. In the next two weeks, we'll get more tutorial information out. Um, 
if there was an F4 in, in Airtable, is this um, data swap? I think it was the only F4 that we saw as a smart contract, an F4 address, I think it was data swap. Um, the, we hit one bug with our front end um, sending data cap because it is a new address. Uh, but we are seeing if that just needs to be a um, update to the front end tooling uh, or if it needs to be sent uh, directly through Lotus. Um, so we're working with our developers and the root key holders uh, to send the data cap to an F4 address. So the first time we've done that, um, it's relatively new uh, based on checking the code. There shouldn't be any problems receiving data cap to an F4. Um, but like I said, we uh, worked with the root key holders the past two days, hit an error on, the, on that one F4 address that I know of, and are working to resolve that. Uh, because hopefully uh, it should be possible based on the whole point of um, F4s and various smart contract tooling that we want. We would like to see more um, smart contracts uh, written that are handling these allocations directly. So I think that addresses those questions. Um, I'm going to go finish uh, pizza and asparagus dinner. Uh, Kay Ray, thank you. Here's Galen. All right. Hey, one last question. Plus, it's such a good one. And it comes from chat. It says, hey, while we wait for this data cap, are we going to refill the LDN? And maybe the reasons like what's going on. So no, the LDN is officially sunset. And just from a timing perspective, it's ready. The last data cap's gone out. There's a handful of applications that might still be open that can reapply as they go forward. But just to kind of go through it, that 3.1 has been completely retooled. And now all data cap won't flow from that one source. It will flow out. So I realize that that might cause some changes to a lot of those business lines. So apologies. And thanks for the transition patience. Eric, floor is yours. Yeah, I would like to ask. So I, I already submit uh, the F1 address through the Airtable. So I choose the File Plus team to help me create the smart contract for the F4 address. So will you help, help me to do that? Uh, we created F2s, multi-sigs, not F4s. Okay. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I follow the, the tool. All those, all those F2 addresses have been created. Um, and data cap is going to them. Those F2 addresses were created and posted in the GitHub application issue for each team. Um, yours is 1039, is that right? Mm, yes. Yes, so your F2 address, if you scroll to your issue 1039, you'll see a um, data cap request for allocator with an F2 address. And that F2 address, um, was created by uh, yours truly, my myself. So I have an address on there as a admin signer. Um, I am happy for people to remove my address once they have gotten this up and running and they have made allocations and they're confident in their address. Um, but already, even in the past two days, we've already gotten messages from people asking to change the address that they initially provided. Um, and one of the advantages to us setting up these multi-sigs is rather than me having to go communicate to the root key holders and say, root key holders, please remove data cap from this F1, send new data cap to a different F1, and update all of our tooling and all of our backend and all of our JSON records. Instead, we just add a new signer to the multi-sig, remove the old signer. Um, so, this is an advantage. This is the thing that we want to keep. This is when we talk about incremental improvements. Um, the advantage here is that uh, F2 threshold of one will allow you to test it, make sure that it's working. You can then remove my admin address, and then you could add um, other backup addresses for people on your team. And uh, one of the things that we want to be doing is... Um, this is a, a thing that came up earlier today, so it'll take a you know week or two. Um, with the new launch of the repo, we want to have a new issue template where people can submit 
um, an issue to have changes to their um, allocator details. We have a JSON file that's tracking all of the allocator details, things like what are the addresses, what are the Slack handles, what are the GitHub handles, so that if you need to add a new address, um, we'll be able to do it as a issue that you submit, and then we can just merge that as a PR, um, and it'll be faster. That's the goal. Um, um, the Not all of the JSON files in that allocator registry were completed. Uh, some of them were missing things like they were still waiting on getting the multisig set up. They were still some data scrubbing issues. Um, so we have another round of JSON files to push uh, to that allocator registry. And like Carrie mentioned at the top of this, that allocator registry is going to be going live more so. I mean, it's already live now um, and people can go look, but I'll post a link to it here. There will be more updates coming throughout the week. There's a folder in there with allocators, um, a JSON file per allocator pathway. This is what I talk about as um, this JSON per pathway will be the source of truth that has your addresses, your multi-sigs, those things. Um, there are, you know, every time somebody says, oh, I, I need to change my GitHub handle or I need to add this person or, the, you know, there was an issue with the data or they change their um, allocation bookkeeping repo. It creates a delay on us kind of going and updating a bunch of systems. So stay tuned later this week. More of the JSONs will be pushed. I think right now there's... We're going to quickly see how many files are in there. No, not at a glance. Um, but I know there's I know there's a handful more that um, we're waiting on just some more edits, and then we'll push more of those JSONs to that registry. Cool. Very clear. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone.